What this video is about is bacon. It's about bacon. And I haven't had breakfast yet, so it's about damn time. Um, but seriously, what this video is about is how to save a story from a long time ago. Like a story you wrote way back when, and you read it now, and you're like, Jesus and Mary and Joseph, how the fuck did I think that was a good idea? Um, that's kind of what we're going to be doing. So, uh, in my live stream yesterday, talking about the new Hank Bradshaw book, Dead Damn Curse, out now. It's out now. Um, you can get it now. And there's also going to be an, an announcement video probably tomorrow um, about the Hankathon. Because we, we meaning me, decided yesterday during the stream, or probably two days ago, for those of you watching this, that that would be a good idea. So, um, whatever, what have you. Okay? And you'll find out more about that as we go. Um, but, bacon. Okay? Um, I wonder if I, if I have the original covers of this, I'll put it up. Because I fucking loved the original cover of this. I thought it was so fucking clever. Um, but to go into this, I'm going to have to give you a little bit of my self-publishing journey. So, way back when, um, the Kindle Gold Rush had just happened. Okay? And I was on the tail end of it. And so we're talking 2012. And then I decided to... And I'm trying to remember exactly how this worked. I think the first things I was putting up during the Kindle Gold Rush, um, funny enough, were paperbacks. Um, was the Slasherton books. Um, you had Sack, Stealth... Stitch, um, and then I think it was Slasherton Origins, and then Sack and Drag, and Captain Quint, oh, and the Creep Creek Creature, and then there was another one that was started and never finished. I think it was a Halloween book or something like that. I can't remember exactly. Anyhow, um, so because I'm such a great marketer and I follow trends so closely, um, during the end of the Kindle Gold Rush, I was putting out paperbacks, which is fine. And the um, they were like picture books, like Mr. Men. If I actually, I'll look for pictures of those and I'll put those up here too. And maybe someday I will put those out again as well. Um, I don't know. Maybe I will. But they were fun little, um, not comic books per se, but like, just like kids books for grownups, um, is kind of how I ran with it. But anyway, the point being, when I realized like, I really need to just do some fucking ebooks and cash in on this shit, I started with, um, a bunch of short stories. And my idea was, was that I would put a new short story out. Um, I can't remember if it was every week or if it was every two weeks. It might have been every week. Put a short story out every week and then um, collect them all together. So the um, stories in that collection were Unsane Sam, um, The Killing of P3. Totally forgot about that until right this second. Um... Anxious, anxious anxiety, bacon, free Kindle books, and gonorrhea. And then the collection was called Creepology. And in Creepology, there was um, an extra story in there called The Roommate. That was a pretty good business plan. Good, nice model now that I'm thinking about it. Um, but anyway, so I put all these books up, and um, the free Kindle books, that's a story for another day, but we will be 
going through that. Um, so the story of Bacon was was that all of these like books I was putting out were just short stories. Um, I think uh, Unsane Sam was like 5,000 words. Um, Killing a P3 might have been 6,000 words. Um, anxious, anxious Anxiety, I think, is 9,000 words, but it's a bunch of very short stories. It's like a collection of shorter short stories. And then um, Gonorrhea, I think, was about 5,000 words. And Free Kindle Books was right under 5,000 words. I remember that distinctly because I was a little pissed off. But that one I wrote in one sitting. And again, we'll talk about that in a later time. Anyway, <clears throat> so Bacon. Bacon was my attempt to write something a bit longer because um, I felt like I was kind of... Um, not that I was ripping people off because it was like 99 cents, you know, whatever. But um, I just felt like in order to really be able to make a living um, writing ebooks, I needed to make sure my audience was happy. Um, so to make sure my audience was happy, I went ahead and fucking wrote this piece of garbage, okay? Um, which was arguably the weirdest and most um, unsettling book out of all of those books. So I was confused so much because when I wrote it, I thought, I'm like, this is fucking amazing. I can't believe, like, th this book's just so fucking good. I love the fucking cover. And, um... All the other ones I had, like, five-star reviews on. Maybe four-star. One of them had a four-star. But um, Bacon came out of the gate with three stars. And I'm like, oh, that's weird. And then the weeks went on, and it was down to two stars. And I'm like, oh, that fucking sucks. And then eventually it was at one star for a really long time. And then I think it went back up to three stars eventually but it was like the first batch of um bad reviews i got for my books and i was um really concerned um but i wasn't concerned enough to read it and go through it and try to figure out why people didn't like it my whole thought was well people must be fucking stupid if they fucking don't get bacon it's so fucking easy. And so some of you might be thinking, well, what the fuck is the book about? Is it about bacon? Is it about a pig? It's about this guy named Malcolm. And whenever he gets anxious, he finds that parts of his body are tightly wrapped in thick, raw bacon. And then he gets more scared because he doesn't understand where the bacon came from. Okay? So, if you're not fucking riveted now, if you're not glued to your fucking seat as to how Malcolm could be wrapped in thick, cut, raw bacon, I don't know what the fuck to say to you. Because it's a very simple story, obviously. Um, now, jokes aside... Um, I was doing a lot of experimenting, not with drugs, very funny. I was doing a lot of experimenting with um, storytelling practices. And this is one of those situations where I think I was too clever for myself. So there's gonna be spoilers abound, but I think it's important to do spoilers in order for you to understand what the fuck I needed to change in this thing. So, first off, this story was a dream I had, okay? So, all of the Freudian and Jungian um, people out there who want to psychoanalyze me, um, feel free to do so in the comments. That'll be a fun fucking trek. Um, 
the whole meat of the st- the meat of the story. That's funny. It's bacon. The meat of the story um, was a dream I had, and then I wrote that dream down. And I mean, this dream I had fucking like probably ten years before I even wrote this, and I wrote this like nine years ago. So there's that. Um, and then there are two other dream sequences in this book. One of them is from the point of view of um, Malcolm, the main character. And the other one is from the point of view of Jack, um, the guy that lives with Malcolm. And I realized when, when I was trying to put this together and I like, kind of plotted it out, um, I was like, uh, this story isn't really that big and I'm trying to write something bigger. And so I looked at those two other um, dream sequences that um, Malcolm had and Jack had, which were dreams that I had had because I was in a period where I was writing all my dreams down. And um, I was like, oh, shit, this is fucking brilliant. Um, I could just put these in his dream sequences and that's cool. The problem with that is, is that if it's not moving the story forward... Like, why fucking have it in there? And I could see almost to an extent if you're making this big world with big characters that are, is going to go on for a long time. And so the dreams they have, like, you want to um, explore parts of your character and have the character learn things about himself through the dreams and stuff like that, you know, whatever. That makes sense. This wasn't that. This was just... This is a fucking weird-ass dream to have. This is a fucking weird-ass dream to have. Now the book's longer. Okay? Horrible way to do it. Another thing I did was um, I wrote... There's one chapter in here where I'm writing about something that happened at the place I was living at while I was writing this. And it was... I noticed that there were bees outside one of the sprinklers broke and so it made all this mud and so all these insects were coming and getting the mud and drinking the water and building their nests with all the mud so there were bees around and then there were other things that looked like bees that weren't quite bees and then there were um yellow jackets and then um there were, yeah, there's a fight. Ooh, holy shit, that was crazy. Uh, I like watching people fight outside. It's so much fun. It's kind of like, it's like my TV. I don't have a TV anymore. All right, so anyway, so you don't want to do that, okay? The other thing is, is that <clears throat> um, in trying to get my word count up, I was very repetitive. And I was trying to do it in a way that was kind of Vonnegut-esque, where, you know that whole thing where, like, a lot of times the way Vonnegut writes is, like, if an alien were to fucking come to Earth and um, witness everything and then go back and try to explain to alien children what the fuck humans are, okay? That's kind of like what um what we had here so there was that <clears throat> but i just kept going and kept going and kept going and doing things like right here like a single solitary thing well if it's a solitary thing it's already single while this is happening it might become aware to you that quite by accident have noticed that you can Hear your heartbeat. It's like just wordy and wordy and wordy and wordy because I was trying to get that word count up. So I think this ended up being like 15,000 words. And if you're sitting there going, wow, you did 15,000 words um, about something you could have done in 5,000 words, most fucking definitely I did. And um, that's not a good thing. Oh, yeah, the, the bees. So there were bees and all this shit. Okay, long story over. There were all these fucking insects, bees, wasps, yellow jackets, um, and then bigger things that I did not know what they were. 
And I was like, oh, dude, I should put this in the story. So then there's this chapter about Malcolm and Jack, um, like, watching all these insects and trying to figure out which ones they like better and why. And yes, there's a small smidgen of character development here. Like, you learn a little bit about Malcolm and you learn a little bit about Jack. But having to read through, like, pages of observing insects to get to that is not the way to go. So, um, with those things said, like, those are three chapters right off the bat that I should probably take out of the book. The other thing is, is that, again, this is a short story. It's a novelette or whatever. It's like 15,000 words, and it's like 12 chapters. Okay, so right off the bat, like, we need to get rid of um, three chapters. And then I was going through the first chapter, which obviously is the longest chapter, because that's how things go. Everything starts off like this, and then as it goes, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, because things are like boom, 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 you know? Idiot. So I realized the first chapter was a lot of setup and the way I did it I think I was trying to be clever and when I read it it feels clever but I don't know if it is clever but in watching people read this then and now um, I have seen people do the thing I want them to do so basically the first chapter is kind of broken up into two parts where for um how long is this okay so it goes to there and then goes to there so the first chapter is like um one two three four five six seven eight it's eight pages long um which doesn't sound like a lot but in a sh- like a fifteen thousand word book like that's almost half okay um So anyway, what I was trying to do is I spent the first half, so four pages basically, I spent trying to convince the reader that they need to start paying attention to things like their breathing, their heart rate, their pulse, just to be aware of these things, how many times they blink as they're reading if their eyes are going to get dry reading, that they're allowing me access into their brain. And I promise that I won't messy up the place. You know, I'm trying to like build this kind of anxiousness. I'm trying to make people start realizing that they breathe involuntarily. But if you think about the fact that you're breathing, you will start focusing on that. If you start feeling like you could feel your heartbeat and you start noticing it, even though your heart does that involuntarily, now you're, you're realizing it. You're breathing. Is your breathing deep? Is your breathing short? Is it from your diaphragm? Is it in your chest? Like, where's all this happening? And again, are your eyes dry reading all this? Like, do you need to blink? And I was doing all this stuff to try to make... Um, there be enough anxiety in the reader before they even get to the weird shit in the book in hopes that when they did get there, it would like hit them harder. It would feel like a bigger um, strain on their inner workings, if you will. And I think that was a really fun, clever way of doing something, but I don't think this was the story to do it in. Um, There are some definitely unsettling things in there, but, like, I feel like I've written way more, like, terrifying shit that if I had used that, if I had used that device before, um, or if I used that device in a different book, it would have fucking worked like gangbusters. So there's a part of me that wants to pull that out. So then that's kind of like another chapter. And then I kind of opened the book with way too much backstory. Um, And so we know Malcolm is the main character of this. 
but we're talking about all this stuff that happened before Malcolm was born. And um, I kind of feel like you need to um, you kind of need to have some like some interaction with your lead before you go into something like that which is why a lot of times flashbacks are great like someone's walking down the street and they see a dead bird on the ground and then they look at the dead bird and the dead bird reminds them of a boat sinking in the ocean for some stupid fucking reason that doesn't happen in this obviously but um you you see where i'm going like um instead of just the narrator of the story already telling you that malcolm is this person but before you understand all the fucked up things about Malcolm, let's figure out all the fucked up things that happened before Malcolm was even alive. And so that, I feel like I need to kind of move that around a little bit. And then the final thing, okay? This is the big spoiler. So get your fucking tinfoil hats on, okay? <clears throat> you find out basically in the last paragraph that Jack, the guy that lives with Malcolm and is like with him the whole time narrating the story to you, you find out that Jack is um, Malcolm's dog. This has always been a thing that um, was tricky because people would be like, wait, so like Jack turned into a dog at the end? Like most people who read this assumed that Jack was a person the whole time and then at the very end of the story without telling you just was now a dog he turned into a dog and um, that didn't play right to me because I'm sitting there going okay I put in a ton of hints throughout this story that um, And not so much in the beginning, but as the story goes, you get more hints closer together that um, Jack may be a dog. The way Jack speaks is very strange. Like I said, it's very repetitive. Um, things kind of go on and on and on and then um, quickly change to something else for no rhyme or reason. And... Um, a lot of the time when Jack is talking about people, Jack says humans instead of people. Like, oh, it's weird that humans do this, 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 and that. Whatever. But um, most people did not catch that. And so I felt, and I've talked about this before in writing tip videos, if, like, you have to... There, okay, there's a fine line between having a good twist and hitting someone over the head with something, okay? So we don't want to think that our audience is fucking stupid, but our audience is only able to deal with what we have given them, okay? So if we have given them a story and there is no reason for them to think that something wouldn't be how it's been presented, that's not really a good twist. That's more like a, hey, don't you feel fucking stupid now that you didn't see this, even though, like, I didn't fucking tell you anything about it, so how the fuck would you know, you stupid fuck? Like, that's not a good twist. A good twist is leaving enough clues that are fucking kind of obvious that after a while, after people hit those clues... They, they kind of find out for themselves, like, oh, shit, is Jack a dog? And then they don't know, and then they keep reading, and then when it turns out Jack is a dog, there is a sense of accomplishment in the mind of the reader. And so the reader should feel more of a kinship to this book, feel like this book, it, it gratified them. They will get a rush of endorphins for figuring something out and being right. You know, like, um, there's a lot to be said with endorphin rushes that you get from reading. And um, I think, honestly, one of the most, um, like, if we need a case study to figure this out, just look at how many women read erotica. 
Okay, are they reading it because, um, wow, this this character development on this werewolf refrigerator person is really great. No, they're reading it because they're getting like chemical reactions from things that are in there. Um, yes, some of them might like reading the about the dinosaurs that are having sex in the book, but other people um, might just like reading words about pulsating members and stuff like that, you know? So if you can give someone a visceral reaction of any kind in your work, they are more apt to like that work and recommend that work because it made them have a physical reaction. Again, which is why all the fucking stupid book prizes are about like some book and the books drab as shit. It goes on and on and on. Hey, but guess what? They're going to kill a dog. They're going to kill a baby. And then at the end of it, someone's going to fucking get their heart broken. Why is this important? Because it made the reader cry. It pulled on the emotional heartstrings. So a person, after they've read a book, they're like, oh shit, my eyes are leaking. I I'm crying. I'm having an emotional reaction to this book. This book must have really touched me not really it just fucking like took advantage of the fact that you're a fucking human being with emotions and no matter what happened 120 pages ago that was boring as shit but you kept reading it and then they fucking killed a puppy so now you like this book because the puppy's dead do you see what i'm saying like this is a i don't mean to be so cynical that I'm taking, like, books are good because you could get um, a, a visceral stimulation or an, a, an emotional response from reading words that are placed together correctly in a sentence. I know it's more than that, and being able to tell a good story is key, but a lot of people make a lot of money just making people feel things, okay? So... Um, just put that in your back pocket if you want. So, again, why I open this book with, like, are you feeling it? Do you feel it yet, Mr. Krabs? Like, all that shit. Um, that was to get an emotional response. The problem I had was that I think I was getting a visceral response from people. And that's why I had so many reviews on this book compared to the other books in that series. But because the book wasn't very good, I got negative reviews. Okay? Do you see how this works? So I played with people's emotions enough to have them feel a bond to this book in some way. But then when it was done, they were they were angry. And so instead of just like, oh man, this book made me feel I was terrified the whole time, it was like what the fuck is this? And um, <clears throat> so that's what I had. So anyway, so my thought now is <clears throat> to go through this and um, really chop it up and make this a shorter story. And then those other things, I think I'm just going to take those and make little bits of... I don't know, flash fiction, like a thousand words of like short stories kind of thing. Because the things that happen in those parts I'm going to cut out are actually really good. And some of that is better than the bulk of this. But um, this story is fucking weird as fuck. So there's that. Now, um, again, how long is this video already? Jesus fucking Christ, I apologize. Um, so the other part of this is the editing. Okay. Now, when I was talking to you guys about this book on the live stream, I said, oh, I could tell you right here. So this book was published in 2013, 2014, 2016, and then hopefully again in 2022. And in 2013, there were two different versions of the book, okay? So this would be the fifth printing, like I said. 
And the first book, the first printing of this, I wrote it, and um, I believe Zoe... No, I don't think it was. I wrote it, and then I gave it to an editor who I was working with on... Um, I had just started working with her. She had some recommendations from people that I knew, so I felt like she would be like a good fit or whatever. And um, <clears throat> she edited all of the stories. And this one, she was really pissed about because I kept changing tense from past tense to present tense. And um, some of you are like, oh, that's fucking like grade school. Like, what the fuck's wrong with you? The reason why this happened is because for the 10 years prior to me writing books, um, I had been writing screenplays. And screenplays are told in present tense because, you know, like he reached over and picked up the guitar pick. He grabbed the lighter. He drank the book. Go, 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 go. I know drink is past tense. Don't give me any shit right now. But you know what I'm saying. So when I started writing, um, I was slipping in and out of that because um, my natural instinct was to do that. And then some of you are going, well, why don't you do what YA does and just write everything present tense? Um, and uh, that is just a silly thing to say. Let's just be honest. No one should do that. I'm just kidding. All, everyone's all like, I write in present tense all the time, you fuck. Um, which is fine if that's what you like to do. But anyway, so we had a huge um, blow up over that because she was pissed off that I had given her a uh, manuscript that was so riddled with tense errors. And she wanted me to rewrite it and um, send it back to her. Um, so she could go over it um, again or whatever. I think I did do that. I think I went through and changed all the stuff. Because then the next big thing that came from her was um, uh, ending, ending a sentence with a preposition. If that's how that is said. Um, she said I did that all the time. And she was really pissed off about it. And she kept changing stuff. And she's like, look, if you don't understand how to do this, I don't know if I could help you. And all this other shit. And I was like, okay, okay, calm down, calm down. And then we got into this big argument. I'm like, well, if people are talking and that's the way they talk, then that's fine. And I understand if you want the narration to not do that, that makes sense. But I don't want to change people's dialogue because that's their voice and the whole fucking thing. So we went back and forth about that for a while, made a compromise. Everything was fine put the book out book was out for maybe two or three months and then um somebody sent me an email and they're like hey um i just wanted you to know that there's a lot of um spelling errors in the book and i was like what and so um they sent me um like all the places in the book which was they didn't fucking need to do that but they did they sent me all the things in the book where there was spelling errors. And a lot of it was like things like there and there and there, you know, like um, different ways of doing that. Um, a couple times where there was no plural when there needed to be a plural. Um, uh, apostrophes that should have been there that weren't there or vice versa. Little things like that. You know, little things like fucking English grammar. Um so then um, Zoe was like, well, why don't I read all of these through again and um, correct all the mistakes? And so I, I couldn't believe that there was this chick who edited my work and n didn't change any fucking spelling errors. Just went through on all this, like, like to me, like, deeper shit. Like, I would rather... Like, all my shit be spelt right than fucking if it, like, made grammatically sense, you know? So, whatever. But, um, so, then that happened. So, Zoe did that. Book's done, right? So, the book goes out again. 
then the book was put into the anthology. Um, and that still should have been the mix of the first editor and Zoe. And then I don't know what the fuck happened. And I think it's because I went from a PC to a Mac around this time. And so if I had written something on a PC, I never brought it over, I don't think. So then I put the original version of this out. Now, the font used on the original version of this is different. The pig is, uh, I think, bigger on this one. And uh, my name is Matt Wall instead of Matt Wall. Okay. <clears throat> so if you have that version... I actually don't know what version of bacon you have. I don't know if you have the rough draft version that I wrote, the um, fixed rough draft that I wrote, the first pass with the editor, the second pass with the editor, or the last pass with Zoe. Okay? I have no idea because I can't find any of those files. I assumed that the file that I had saved um, when I did finally like at least put one copy of everything on my new computer was the original like final file of it. But apparently it wasn't. So, but again, the computer I made the original copy of this on in 2016 is not the same computer that I have sitting in front of me now. So that file could have been a different file okay so basically there's all these files of this book i don't know where they are i don't know what they are but i have a a book and i have to fucking fix it because the tense in this is all fucked up there's tense problems abound and so if you got that copy um i apologize and um so let, let's say this if you purchased the um this copy the original copy of this in between i don't know 2016 to probably 2018 before i sold out of them um if you have that let me know take a picture of it and send it to me and i will send you the new and improved version of this once i finish that Okay, so that was a really fucking long video, um, and I, this will be edited to shit. But the other thing is, I was thinking of, okay, I was thinking of this. I'm wondering if I should live stream me trying to fix this. Would that be something you would want to watch? Would you want to spend hours with me trying to fix something that by all means should probably just be thrown in the garbage? Let me know down below if that's something you're interested in. Let me know if you have any horror stories like this about your books. Um, this is really fun and exciting, so let me know. And I will talk to you guys later. Oh, yeah. Dead Damn Curse, out now. I'll talk to you later. Bye.